question from the sister side? Yes. It's on behalf of a sister. As a divorced woman having children, what would you advise for the kids who don't listen? Sometimes they do haram things. I explain to them that is haram, still keep repeating that. Please help me in this matter and just to clear with you that these children are very precious to me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our children. And there are a lot of people actually are facing these problems, especially with their children. First of all, we have to understand that uh, one of the most important things that we need to teach our children. Of course, we teach them Islam, but what's the, what part of Islam? One of the first things that we should teach our children is, is manners. And teach them manners and teach them to be nice and kind to you. And also, you have to understand that they are affected by what they watch. And so if your children are watching Bart Simpson, they're going to treat you like Homer Simpson. If they're watching cartoons, that are not appropriate. You might think some cartoons are appropriate, but many of them are not appropriate. Like for example, some of the, some of the cartoons that some people might think that, oh, mashallah, you know, they're Disney cartoons and so forth. And you wonder why some of our children are disobedient. You notice that some of these princesses, they're always disobedient to the father. But you know what? It says it's okay to be disobedient to your father because in the end it's going to be okay. And so you see why sometimes they're running away with, the, with this guy, right? The girl is running away with the guy. Even the parents, when the parents say, no, you know, um, I don't think you should marry that person. Then they just take off. Why? Because they're probably following, anybody uh, remember Aladdin? Right? They're, they're probably thinking, you know, it's okay for me to go on that carpet ride. Right? Even though my father doesn't like it. I'll go on that car ride. When I come back, everything will be okay. Because in the end, it's always a happily ever after ending. And then the father's okay at the end and so forth. And so some of these things, sometimes you don't realize, but your children are learning from it. And so one of the first things you have to teach your children, you have to teach them manners. You have to be careful with them. And also, you know, advice for all, the sister, myself, and everyone else. When it comes to our children, of course, we love our children very much. And they're very precious. But the most important thing you can teach them, if you love them, then you teach them Islam. And you put them in the best place, the best environment that you can get for them. A lot of times we are willing to spend, we'll spend anything, you know, for entertainment. Right? We'll spend it without, a, without any hesitation. But when it comes to the education of our children, we hesitate, oh, that's too expensive. Right? But they're precious to us. But then we prefer... A 42-inch HD TV. We'll spend it, no problem, when it comes to entertainment. And also, we have to realize, you know, when you have, you know, Alhamdulillah, I just had a daughter recently. You know, when you hold your son or daughter, when you first have them in your hands, you swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will do anything and everything to give that daughter or that son the best to make them successful. Not like you to be, you know, all fathers and all mothers, when the, their children come to them and they say, Father, Father, uh, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. What do you say to them? But no, son, I want you to be better than me, right? All of us, we want our children to be better than us. And so you have to realize, you have to understand just that day when you promised that you would provide them with everything that would make them successful in this world and hereafter, then be patient with them and continue to fulfill that promise that you promised when you held them for the first time. And so, teach them manners. And it's spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're spending in order for them to get the proper education, in order for them to be better Muslims, then... This is all in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is sadaqah in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will repay you. So remember that. And so continue you know, to teach your children manners. And if you teach them manners, the first thing you teach them, of course, is to be obedient to you. 
And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered anyways. To worship Him, none other except Him, and to وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا So you're teaching them Islam. So when you teach them Islam, that's how you have peace in the family. You teach them to worship none except Allah and to be kind to you. And then once you teach them to be kind to you and be nice to you and have the man proper manners with you, then you can teach them anything else after that. But if they don't have those manners from the very beginning, you can't do anything. They don't, they're not listening to you. They're not going to listen to you. So start with that, with manners. And one of the best ways to have, to teach them manners is to tell them stories of the companion. Stories of the prophet. Stories of the best of mankind. You know, people know a lot of things about these football players. In America, we call them soccer players or sports stars or actors and actresses. When it comes to the companions and the real role models that we should be following, our children don't know. And if our children knew as much about these companions as they knew about these movie stars, these sports stars and singers, then we, wouldn't, we probably wouldn't have done too much of these problems. And so continue to teach them and be patient with them and always make dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have piety and righteousness and that they are pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll take the next question from the brothers on the mic on my left. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Farman Ali Afridi. I'm from Pakistan, working in X-ray technician over here in Dubai. My question is, if a common society of any religion, if they are lacking justice and peace, what a common person should do? What should things he should adopt? If in a society there's a lack of justice and peace, first of all, in Islam, one of the main principles, the main teachings of Islam, is to always order that which is good and forbid that which is evil. And so anytime you see something, see a wrong, don't let it go. To try to always remind each other. This religion is a deen and nasiha. But at the same time, when you are in a society where you see a lot of oppression and a lot, you know, a lot of wrongs, and you might not be able to influence others and you are being influenced, then maybe you should try to look for uh, other places if you're not able to remind others. But at the same time also, we are also ordered. Sometimes that's not an option. You can't leave. This is what you have to do. The thing is, sometimes Allah is testing us. So we have to be patient. We have to be strong. And we continue to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. For indeed, there, everyone in life, you have to understand, Muslims and non-Muslims, everyone in life is facing some type of hardship. So when you're looking at another person, be kind to them also. Because they're fa even they might not be facing the same hardship you're facing, but others are also facing maybe different types of hardship. So this life, this whole life in this world, we are asked to be patient and to be strong and to remind others and also to be with good people. And so if you happen to be in an area there where there's a lot of oppression, there's a lot of wrong, try to find friends and companions who will help you and who will strengthen you, who will give you the deen. Because it doesn't matter who is it that's against you. The thing is, if you're strong in your deen, if you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is always enough for you. And so strengthen the first thing in times of hardship that you need to do. That's why that you need to do is to strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you ask. You have to ask. You have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. And at the same time, if there's oppression and there's wrong, don't be like them also. Don't stoop down to the level of those who are doing the wrong. You stand up for the truth. You stand up and be strong. And put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I mentioned, just have good companionship. That always helps and strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a two-way question because there's a question by a mother and a question by a daughter which are related, so I'll put them together. The mother says, is there any hope to repair the damage which I had done for several years to my children as I was bringing them up? I used to yell at them, get angry, get mad, sometimes beat them. I may have been unreasonable but unintentionally out of stress 
I have been like this with them. Is there any hope for me? And a daughter has written, as a daughter, I've experienced miscommunications with my mom, which makes her short-tempered. And even if my mistakes are small or not, even severe, my question, how should a mother control her temper and how am I supposed to take it? Okay, mashallah, you have from both sides. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to all that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to mother and the daughter relationship, first of all, you have to understand that the mother, the position of the mother is very, very respected in Islam. The position of the mother. It shows how much Islam respects the status of woman. We know the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in which a companion said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man haqqun nas bi husni sahabati. Who has the most right for my righteousness or my good dealing? Who should I be nice and kind to the most? What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? He said, your mother. And then the, the companion again asked, then who next? He said, your mother. And then, then who next? Your mother. And then afterwards he said, your father. Do you know what? Do you know if this were an Olympic race, the mother would have gotten the gold, the silver, and the bronze. And the father would have gone home crying. Right? That's the status of our mothers. That's the status of our mothers. And we, as if your child, you have to understand, we have, they went through a lot for us and they love us. They want the best for us. But at the same time, they're also not perfect. And so we have to love them. Not only do we love them naturally, but we love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it mean to love them for the sake of Allah? It means that you love them because you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love you. You do it for Allah's sake. And so even though you come home and you clean the house, and then your mother comes home and she says to your elder sister, not you, and you're the one that cleaned the house, to your elder sister, thank you for cleaning the house. How do you feel? Next time you probably say, forget it, I'm not cleaning the house. Right, look, I clean the house and my older, elder sister gets all the credit. Now, if you did it for Allah's sake, you love your mother for the sake of Allah, you wouldn't stop. You don't stop because you're ordered to do it by Allah and Allah will give you the reward. And so, when there's like problem between the mother and the daughter, we have to speak, you know, on, we have to try to, you know, improve also our communication at the same time to understand our daughters also. And sometimes when you're, you have to be just with your sons and daughters, with our children. And remember, in order to have peace, there must be justice. In order to have peace, there must be justice. And this also applies in the house. And that's why when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was approached by a man who said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I would like you to be a witness in this transaction of mine. I have given my son, so and so, my garden. And so what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? He said, did you give a similar garden to all your children? So he said, no. He said, then I will not witness something that is false. That's zulm, that's oppression. I don't ask me to witness something like this. To be a witness over something like this. In other words, even with our children, we have to be fair with them. We have to be just with them. But at the same time, you know, we have to also have patience with each other. And we have to love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to love each other so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love us. And that's our main goal. And for the daughter, just remember that being kind to your mother also involves being good to her and being obedient to her. And hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshallah reward you for that. And at the same time for the mother to also be patient with your daughter and be kind to them and be understanding and listen to them and try to control your anger uh, because maybe sometimes it's just that anger that causes that. And trust me, if you, it's difficult for someone 
it's difficult for someone to be kind and to be nice when sometimes the daughter is yelling and screaming and so forth. So do it for the sake of Allah. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring you back together and also strengthen the bond between yourselves. Wallahu ta'ala. Take a question from the brothers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Muhammad Siddiq from India. I'm an IT professional. First of all, I'd like to thank you for the beautiful uh, lecture over here. Uh, my question is again relating to the children, especially on behalf of my children. We try to teach them very near to Quran and Hadith and uh, all the stories of the prophets and uh, the Sahaba and everybody. But when my children, when they go out in the practical world, they'll keep coming back and asking, this is a Muslim, but why he's doing a sin? Or why he's doing bad things, which we should not do? So we are facing difficulty to answer this. Can you help us? Uh, my children are listening to you in the hall right now. MashaAllah. So um, a lot of times we only deal with our children. And we don't realize that our children are affected by other people's children also. And so that's why it's very, very important for us as Muslims to help each other raise our children. Even if we don't have children, we have to help each other. You know, like they say, right? There's an African saying that says it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to raise a child because you have to teach your children. And if you teach your children very well, and then they go out to their aunt's and uncle's house, and they're not like that, then they're going to be affected by that. So you prevent them from doing something here that's not good. Then they go, they say, okay, I'm just going to go to my cousin's house all the time. And nobody, in that house, nobody's preventing anything. And, nobody's, and so that's why we, as adults, we have to strengthen ourselves and we have to work together. We, have, we can't just be by ourselves as a community, as a group. Maybe, you know, you have a group of friends. You have to get together and set up plans and to, to help each other. Like, for example, I know in America, we have what's called homeschooling. And because we, a lot of people, a lot of the children, uh, a lot of parents don't want to send their kids to public school because of the, you know, some of the bad influences that occur. And, but, you know, not everyone is able to teach their children everything. So sometimes, you know, you have groups, the mothers get together and the fathers also get together. And the children come together. And then they learn and they take turns. And so we ourselves, as family members, as community members, or as you know, a group, or as, we have to come together and work together. Because you start thinking of nafsi, nafsi, just yourself, and not worrying about other children. Your children will be affected by them also. So we have to try to work together. And we have to also, if you try to find good people, that we befriend. Because whom we befriend also, our children will befriend them also. So if you're befriending people who are not very practicing, then that's also going to affect our children because we're going to visit them and their children, the children are also going to be affected by that also. So we have to keep that in mind also. Wallahu. Jazakallah. Inshallah. I'd like to just remind again that the topic um, is companions of prophets, ambassadors of peace. We encourage you to put questions as much as possible on the topic. We'll take a question from the sisters now. Uh, the question is, my mother-in-law is working in a college and due to her full day's tiring work, she neglects her salah and fasting in the month of Ramadan. Can you please advise how can I address this matter to her without disturbing our peaceful coexistence at home? When it comes to speaking to people who are older than you or parents or people who are more respected, maybe who are elders, you have to be wise. You can't speak in a way where they, they feel that you're belittling them. And so there are different ways to approach cases similar to yours. One of the best ways is instead of just telling them to do something, put it in the form of a question. So one way, for example, if you see someone doing something wrong, you might ask them, I'm not very knowledgeable, but I want to know what is the ruling on this. And they might be the ones who are doing that wrong. And so as a question also is a way, you know, putting an advice in the form of a question. So that's one of the best ways for advising people who are older than you. 
at the same time also, if, uh, if you want to advise people, one of the best methods to advise people without them feeling uncomfortable is telling them stories to raise their iman or bring them to places that will raise their iman. Because sometimes you can just say, you know, you should be praying, you should be doing this, but then they feel like you're nagging. So why are stories very effective? The reason is because if you're telling them to do this and that, or you're reminding them to do this and that, they might feel that you're nagging, that you're always, you know, on their back. And they might even argue with you and say things that are totally wrong because the pride sometimes comes in the way. And so if you tell them stories related to that or just stories that erase their iman, and do it often enough, then inshallah, hopefully, you know, they'll be reminded. Because sometimes there are people before who maybe have not worn the hijab or who don't cover themselves properly. But then the reason why they come back to cover themselves is not because somebody told them to cover themselves. It's because they heard a story of the punishment in the grave. Or they heard a story about paradise or the hellfire or a story about a scholar before. And then it brings them back to Islam. And it might not be related to what they're doing that's wrong. So you want to put them in a situation where they are reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as often as you can, even if it's not pertaining to that particular matter. And so when it's time to pray, you might just pray in front of them. So just to let them realize that you know what, they should be praying. And praying on time is very important. So you might say, well, maybe your father and your mother or your father are not praying on time. So, oh, it's time to pray. I have to pray right now. The earlier we pray, the more reward we will get. And on the day of judgment, every single minute that we are delaying, we will regret those minutes. We will regret those minutes. And then you do it yourself to show the importance of prayer. So put it into action, you yourselves. And that's one of the most effective ways of making da'wah. Wallahu ta'ala. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya. I'm afraid that's all we have time for the question and answer session, inshallah. جزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.